Israeli startup Aleph Farms is one of the best funded players in the nascent cultivated meat space. It's also hoping to stand out from the crowd with the launch of a thin cut steak as its first product. But is its technology scalable? Um, I think that on one hand there were very high expectations and I believe we as the startups were probably also part of um, this, uh, uh, you know, this, this uh, mismanagement of expectations. And a lot of companies uh, actually had very aggressive uh, work plan which uh, were difficult to, to, to sustain. But beyond that, I think that the investors also, also have a role in that because you know, the, there was a lot of money until a couple of years ago and investors you know, <laughs> poured a lot of money on companies yes. were pushing them to grow as quick, as big as possible. Um, while the technologies were not yet mature enough. And I think that it's very health, healthy to see today you know, a more uh, um, fact-based, science-based approach and more staged and cautious approach to, to scale up. Uh, this is actually the approach we're implementing at iFarms and I believe that uh, investors who are uh, sophisticated uh, do understand the issues at stake and the potential for uh, cultivated meat uh, remain very bullish. Um, and we'll continue to see some investments in the space uh, from investors who again are uh, sophisticated enough uh, to um, assess the, um, the technology readiness of those companies but also to understand the potential. And within this space we decided to focus only on uh, high impact, high value products. We believe that for cultivated meat to really um, be um, a reasonable um, offering in the market it needs first to solve real issues in terms of impact, and that's why beef, um, in terms of uh, land, water, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, you name it, beef is really the, um, the issue to take care of. And the uh, high value, um, the selling price of beef is obviously much higher than uh, chicken or chicken nuggets or, or uh, um, different types of uh, uh, min minced meat. Yes. And we believe that, uh, you know, as Cultivated meat will be a relatively expensive innovation at start until we drive the cost curve down and uh, become competitive in the mass market. We need to focus on products with a higher selling point at the beginning, which is the same strategy uh, Tesla in in implemented at the time with a relatively expensive technology such as electric vehicles. And this is the way they were able to really drive this transition. The process needs to be optimized for scale it, it relies on uh, using the right uh, equipment, uh, which uh, should be dedicated for cultivated meat and not necessarily transferred from the biotech industry. And third, it also relies on an upstream supply chain, meaning we need to make sure all the inputs to the process are available in the quantities, but also the quality and the cost, which can uh, support the increase in scale of the company. So we, we use a... Uh, um, cells which are isolated from a, an oocyte, which is a fertilized egg, uh, just after the fecundation um, of, a, of an egg uh, from a cow, we isolate the very first uh, tens of cells which, which are dividing, um, much before they start to develop into an, an embryo. Um, and the, the benefit of using those cells is that uh, they can replicate almost forever, yes. relatively efficiently. You don't have to keep going back to the source. Exactly, and with no need for immortalization yes. or genetic engineering, yes. meaning the cells remain actually uh, identical in the genetic material as the cells which make the, the steaks which we used to eat today. So in our case, we have a dedicated um, a patent mm. uh, about a unique process we have uh, developed uh, um, and which uh, makes all cells growing very efficiently in mm. aggregates yes. without any micro carriers. Yes. Um, we are not using single cell suspension because mm -hmm. we don't want to immortalize or to genetically modify our cells. Uh, once we get to a significant uh, mass of cells, we then seed them onto a plant-based matrix, which is also called a scaffold. Um, where they continue their growth and their differentiation. The combination of the scaffold and the cells enables to get uh, um, the right uh, texture of a meaty product, um, but also to obtain uh, the right uh, taste, flavor, and uh, other sensory properties. In, in the first product we have developed, mm -hmm. um, or Petty Steak, uh, we're focusing primarily on, uh, um, on connective tissue and muscle. Mm. We have a little bit of fat okay. from animal uh, origin, but we focus primarily on uh, connective tissue and, and uh, muscle for mm -hmm. a couple of reasons. 
Um, in parallel, we also have uh, other platforms for uh, cultivated fat and the range of other products. Uh, Aleph Farms is actually leveraging its uh, core technology for cell culture to develop a range of different uh, applications. Mm. What are you seeing out there in the broader ecosystem to support this industry that gives you the confidence that it can scale up and bring costs down, whether that's things to lower the cost of cell culture media or bioprocess scale up or, or whatever? Mm -hmm. What we see in the last uh, two, three years is really um, a very strong ecosystem being built around Aleph Farms in particular and the, the, this emerging industry of cultivated meat in general. And I think that is what is uh, required, what is needed to really drive a transition of, uh, of the food system in, in the right direction. It's very difficult for one single startup by its own uh, to drive a transition of a one and a half trillion dollar market. Um, at Aleph France, we're working closely with uh, six different uh, corporate partners, food and meat uh, uh, global uh, partners, but also with a range of um, uh, upstream partners uh, for the supply of our ingredients, uh, with the technology partners, with engineering partners, equipment manufacturers, and uh, this uh, um, gathering of all those capabilities together to solve one you know, um, single focused issue is in my views the, the best indicator of all um, it, of that the right uh, that's the right time uh, for us to be in the market and uh, uh, that we have the, the possibility to really uh, achieve our goal we believe that uh, the cultivated meat industry right now and the cellular agriculture ecosystem as a whole are at a similar uh, stage as uh, renewable energies 15 years ago 20 years ago when uh, solar panels were still very expensive not very efficient, there were few uh, suppliers. Um, and actually, thanks to this ecosystem building, and the ecosystem in includes also um, public entities. Yes. We need this type of public-private partnerships and uh, support uh, through policy making, uh, through direct incentives, uh, through de-risking the initial phases of scaling up uh, and innovation. And all that together is what we need in order to uh, drive the cultivated meat industry through its initial stages of scale-up. Same as with uh, um, solar panels or even uh, same as with uh, electric vehicles, which also um, you know, work closely with uh, the, 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 the public entities and uh, the wider ecosystem to go through those initial stages of uh, scale-up. So can you talk briefly about your go-to-market plan, where and uh, when you hope to launch? We decided to launch in uh, smaller countries uh, first, in Israel and Singapore, and to, set, to leverage those uh, initial markets as uh, hubs for us to expand into the Middle East and th Southeast Asia, and, and then uh, uh, to target the, the US. Uh, in a second stage, we believe that in order to go to the US, um, significant investments are required. Um, it's also a big market. We prefer uh, testing our product in uh, smaller markets first. Um, and then uh, following the US, uh, we're developing a strategy for expanding globally. You have got an application in uh, with the Swiss authorities, mm -hmm. I believe. Yes, we believe Europe will probably take more time. <laughs> But uh, we filed uh, with uh, uh, the FSA in the UK and with the FSOV in, uh, in Switzerland, mm. which are act actually not part of the European Union, um, meaning they are a bit less uh, rigid and uh, less cumbersome. Um, and we believe that uh, we'll file in, in a range of additional countries uh, during uh, 2024 to prepare the ground for further global expansion. W we believe that. Uh, We'll see in the next you know, five, ten years companies focusing either on just operations and production or on uh, product uh, development uh, and branding. Um, it will be difficult for companies to do both yes. efficiently, especially in the current funding environment yeah. because it will require uh, significant resources. At Alephons, we decided to focus on product development and branding. Um, and uh, uh, we decided to rely on external partners when and where we can for the production. Mm -hmm. So we're working actively with uh, our uh, own ecosystem, mm -hmm. but also with um, uh, subcontractors and uh, external parties 
uh, to rely on their uh, capabilities for scaling up quicker and uh, larger. So, funding, how much money have you raised and how have or have investor attitudes changed over the last two or three years? Alifams has raised so far approximately $140 million. Since 2021, um, the appetite of investors for risk has changed uh, because of the increased interest rate. Um, investors are uh, more risk adverse today. Uh, so it's more difficult to raise large rounds at an early stage. Um, the cost of capital being much higher as well, it's uh, more difficult to uh, fund um, capex, capital expenditures with um, equity or venture capital. Mm. Um, so that's why we believe that the, the right uh, um, strategy is really to uh, disconnect between product development and marketing and production and to uh, try and externalize the production as much as we can. What is uh, really a, you know, a significant development of the last uh, couple of years is uh, that we see um, a lot of uh, public support uh, toward uh, cultivated meat in particular and complementary proteins in general, both in Europe um, starting with the, the UK, but also the European Union has endorsed uh, uh, cultivated meat and, and sell egg in uh, their strategic plans. Um, from the US with the, um, you know, uh, the, the, the first uh, um, cellular agriculture research center at Tufts, which has been funded, but also massive funding um, uh, toward the transition of agriculture and uh, uh, climate change yes. uh, uh, mitigation as part of the uh, Inflation of the Act. Inflation Reduction Act, yeah. Act the biomanufacturing um, strategy, um, the Farm Bill, which is also very much focused on the transition of agriculture in the US. We've seen this trend in Asia very, very strong starting even before COVID yes. um, in Singapore, but also in uh, China, in Japan, um, in a, a range of uh, significant countries. Um, and we believe that it will continue. We're working very closely with a range of international organizations, such as the, the Food System Summit of the United Nations, the, the WEF and FAO, uh, to, to really educate the policymakers uh, about the, the, the potential benefits uh, of cellular agriculture and the role it might play in the transition um, of the, the food system toward more um, sustainability and food security.